We're live. Hey, welcome to another uh, Thursday Night Grind uh, live style. I'm excited tonight because I'm doing a um, paramilitary two. We'll talk about this some more in a minute. Uh, the I, what I'm ex well, the reason I'm excited about this is because it's um, it is kind of held as maybe like the perfect pocket knife, and it is pretty dope. I've never worn one. I don't own one. But I can see some reasons why. Like it, it's pretty nice, and it, I'm just I got tried it in my pocket. It, it goes in nice. Sometimes the clip is enough to drive me bananas, but this clip is okay. And like, I could see myself <laughs> getting better at a spider drop, and also entertaining the nice, great grip, a lot of handle here, nice jimping on the thumb. You get a, you could definitely make something happen with that. So I don't know, I'm into it. And um I think they're you know they're they're popular, so it wouldn't be uh strange for one of these to come across your your bench. This one, like I so oftentimes I'm asked to do like a cut test or something, like th th there's nothing. It's a it's blunt. It's so like I'm not gonna do a piece of paper or anything, like it won't even it won't do anything, which is great. Like uh this this knife has been worked. It is not a collectible. It's a knife that gets used. That's my favorite type. And uh, I'm excited to get into that. Peter from Ottawa. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. I ask uh, just to get the chat lively. If you could weigh in on where you're at. Thank you, Peter, for kicking that off. And also ask for the courtesy thumbs up while you're here. Yo, before I rock and roll on that Spider Co, though, check it out. I'm in a book. Yo, my man, my man Nick Loper, uh, really ultimately like he got me on the scene. Uh, I really appreciate him. And, and he's actually, he's, he's been, he did a, uh, inter not an interview. Like he hooked me up with some, uh, info. Like we did a video meeting for the guild, me asking him questions, like just picking his brain. Like, how do we, how are we sharpeners? How do we get that first random? Right. Cause my business model, um, is like friends and family and then grow out and like, just pick his brain on random. But anyway, what Nick has done, is compiled a book on a hundred ways like of all, all this he runs a side hustle side hustle show and also side hustle nation uh but anyway he picked uh, like a hundred ways a hundred side hustles that he's come across to generate a thousand dollars a month in revenue and uh he compiled the like he's asked everybody who did that to answer some typical questions uh, and he compiled it all in a book and I'm, I'm pretty stoked. I'm super honored to be included in this book. Uh, so thank you, Nick. And I'm also excited. I just got it. So I haven't had a chance to read through it, but I bet there are some dynamite tips in here for side hustles, uh, like growing my own. And as I've done this, I've wondered, like, I, I don't know why more people don't do it. It has, uh, literally changed my world. So, um, you should do that. <laughs> All right, Phil's here. Right on. Thanks, man. Oh, Randy, too. Good. What I like about this is uh, like the uh, some of these guys, like Lawless Blade Works, right? Like, that's Randy, you know? Like, thanks for being here. Okay, so thanks for, um, yeah, and hit that thumbs up for me. Thanks for humoring me as I promote Nick, his book. Go get that on Amazon and uh, read up on it. I'm, I'm excited too. So, without further ado, let's do the spider co here's how this is going to go down first off this knife gets used i'm not i'm not too worried about it so in a way that i'm going to tape up the face right like put tape on the face to prevent scratches it's already beat up i don't think i'm going to do anything worse than what's already there so i'm just going to carry on the way i'm going to do this is cut bevels on the one by 30 and then take it over to the edge pro to finish it out um he did say, he, clearly he knows he's been working this knife. I'm going to give it a, a, a little steeper than I might normally go. This is S, uh, CPM S35VN. This is a high quality steel uh, from my perspective. And I could, I might go 21 degrees if it was anyone else, but I think I'm going to go 23 on the Edge Pro. Uh, and you can weigh in on that if um, you think I might, should do anything else. All right, John is here. Mike from Missouri. Nice. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. Uh, put the book in the description. Yeah, good call. Thank you for that, Peter. Will do. Tim, yes. <laughs> First timer. Tim and I actually had some exchanges today. Tim, um, 
you asked me a question in one of my videos and I haven't been able to answer is what stone did I use? I didn't go back and watch the video to see what stone it was. It was probably, uh, it was probably an edge pro stone. Um, but I, I'd ha I have to go back to the video to see what it was. And I haven't done that. Okay. Thank you for the questions. Ask away. Uh, but for now, okay, uh, I'm going to cut bevels. I think I'm going to start on the 120 grit. I have a relatively worn in, not maybe almost worn out ceramic on here. Although, you know, I'm a Cubitron guy. Uh, but I also, I also have a bunch of ceramics I got to get through. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to not zoom up. Super, well, I can bring you over here a little bit. I'm going to, I probably am going to do this all slack belt. Uh, unless it's going real hard for some reason for what I'm talking about here. Uh, slack belt, platen backer. You can get more action uh, pushing against the platen. You have something to push against, uh, but it is a little more gentle on the edge when you're forming an apex when I go against the apex, uh, when I go slack belt. Neves Knives is in. What's up, man? Love your channel. Love your channel. Okay, so uh, here comes some noise. Knife needs a lot of work. I actually might do a little platen back here. There's no choil on this. It's going to be a little hard to get in there at the very heel. I might get it. The disadvantage of doing this live is I don't have a camera person to get you in a closer look. But if you have any questions, hook them up in the chat and I will check. Hold on. I think it'll work. Starting to get a burr at the tip. All right, good. Almost there. Yeah, right on, Ward. Good to see you, man. Although I don't see you. You know what I mean. Tell you what I'm looking at here. I can see the burr popping up, um, and I have this light here, which is great. It helps me see that, uh, and I'm looking for it to be nice and strong. And it's pretty strong back here, pretty strong up here. I got a little more work to do in the belly. It's putting up a burr now, but it's not as prominent as I want it to be. looking pretty good now.
I am going to call this good here. Uh, that's the majority of the noise for this sharpening trip. I'm going to bring you over here to the edge pro. I've got my stones soaking. All right, so if you needed to do that work on the edge pro, you would be, you'd be in it all night. You'd be in it all night, man. All right, here comes some light. I'm just catching up on some uh, some chat here. Uh, no, so do, yeah, uh, your question here, I'm reading Peter's question about handling the burr on Damascus. Like, so is there anything special about the burr on Damascus? And my answer to that is no. My, my take on Damascus is it's, it's really a process more than uh, anything else, the way that that steel is made. Um, so no, I would handle the Damascus the same as any other. Uh, what I was saying there, so like if you, if I needed to do that much work, I know this is going to be so hard for you. You can't tell how big the, the, there was no bevel, right? There was no bevel. So I had to cut new bevels. If I had to do that on the edge pro, you guys would not stay with me long enough to do that. Um, so that is why I'm combining the belt and stone action here. I, I just have to get that work done uh, if I value my time, which I do. I'm going to put a fresh piece of tape on here since I'm not masking my uh, the blade itself. Set myself up for success. I have my rags right here and available. All right, I'm going to set the slide guide. This thing is sweet. If you have not upgraded your Edge Pro to include the slide guide, I highly recommend it. And engage the magnet. That's nice. All right, I said I want to do 23 degrees because this knife is getting, uh, it's getting worked and the owner uh, shared that with me. Although I think that this steel could take something a little more shallow. All right, so here's one thing I do, right? So I'm, I, I use a, a shaft collar, but what I do, so I set the shaft collar to the guide, the arm here. I, I still go back and reset it here just because I'm like that. Yeah, Chris, yeah, they, this will all go, uh, this will all be up on YouTube. You don't have to hang out for the whole thing. Come back anytime. Catch them all too, man. The Thursday night grind is probably like, I don't even know, 70 plus videos deep now. So uh, there's great, great stuff there. Bring you right in on this. How's that sound? It feels a little light, but okay. So now let's see how this looks. So I wanted to I have the 220 on here now. I might, I got it pretty close at the tip. Looks like I went a little more shallow back here. Right, so the, the thing that I like to do on the one by 30 is aim a little shallow. I'd rather be 21 degrees on the one by 30 if I'm coming to 23 so that I'm putting up a burr right away. I don't remember what side I finished on. I do have a burr the whole way, but I don't remember if that is from the belt or from this. See the value of the slide guide here? Like this thing has only one place to go, the knife in the fixture. We had a discussion in the guild recently about freehand sharpening and uh, like some people ask for it, some people charge more for it. For me, 
I cannot deliver a better result freehand. I now know that there are people who can. Neves is actually uh, Jared, right? Like probably the best freehand uh, knife sharpener that I've come across. All right, I got to burr the whole way. But anyway, like I can't charge more to freehand knife. It'll take me, it'll take me way longer, but the result's going to be way worse. But there is, I think there's some opinions out there, thoughts or like people have thought, think that freehand sharpening gets better results. And uh, Jason made some good points about the stones that he used. Like he's got higher quality or different, I don't know, like, he gets good results on it. So I kind of respect that. I didn't think much about it, but I still, I can't compete by freehand with locking this knife in exactly where it goes and having the stone be at the perfect angle. Perfect meaning repeated for every stroke going up through every stone in the progression. All right, so th now that uh, I did not need to go to the 120, the 220 stone put up a burr and got bevels on both sides. That is, um, I'm happy about that. It doesn't always work like that, but if you, if you, if I come off the one by thirty looking good, then, then that happens. All right, now the burr gets smaller. This came up in one of the recent videos too. As you go up and grit, the burr becomes increasingly more difficult to detect with whatever your favorite method is. Mine is a, a fingernail. Being careful at the tip. Without a choil cut into here, I have to be a little bit deliberate about putting a little bit of that a little bit of that on it. So I get the stone action all the way to the back of the blade. And it's still hard. It's hard to get it. And then what happens is you end up washing out some of the belly by, by grinding, putting too much in there. But it's just the case for putting a choil in. I'm not going to do it, but I am a fan of choils. Just making sure, just checking my scratch pattern down the whole, the whole bevel. I did not cut all the way up to the shoulder of the bevel on this side. I'm thinking about whether I want to go back and do that. I think I'm going to go back. I haven't gone far yet. A couple more passes with the 220 on this side. Ben Dale, the inventor of the Edge Pro, joined the whole guild for a discussion not long ago. And one of the things that I took away from that discussion with him is slow is fast. And I'm trying to be, I'm trying to focus on that because maybe I move, I saw away a little bit faster than what he would recommend. He's saying that the abrasives get a better bite when you move a little bit slower. Check to see if I'm all the way up to the shoulder on that bevel now. I am not. Yeah, back here gets hard. Again, super fan of the choil. All of those, uh, like all the interviews that I do for the guild are all recorded and made available to anyone who becomes a member. So we actually have a pretty awesome deep archive of content. The way I think about it, like right now, I, you know, I, I have a day job, I commute, and I suppose a lot of other people do too. And if you wanted to start a sharpening business and you're currently commuting, the content we're producing, putting up in the guild, both like Oh, the other, yeah, like these interviews that I do. I'm pretty close here. I think I'm going to call that good. Perfection. Oh, let that go. 
Uh, hey, Randy. Yeah, I'm not up to my diamond stones yet. So uh, I'm still working through the aluminum oxides. Uh, I'm, when I get up into the higher grit, I'll be using the diamond matrix stones. Not a... Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't, I'm trying to think through like what my logic there is. I think that, so the coarser stones get more work, right? These ones are, the aluminum oxide are significantly more affordable than the uh, diamond matrix. And um, so once I get above a thousand grit, I shift to the diamond matrix and they last uh, pretty much forever up at that grit. I think I did wear out, it was 1100 grit. I don't know. But I will also be skipping a few grits. All right, so you want to do enough, right? So again, I'm, just, I don't, I'm not always this deliberate, but the uh, idea when you move up in grit is to remove the scratches of the previous grit. So I'm just doing the inspection there. Checking this side out. Having a uh, shop light right over the desk is helpful. I'm going to do one more pass on this side. So I'm a super pro, uh, super fan of the Edge Pro, uh, and I know that uh, some people don't are not as big of fans of it. They don't get the same quality results off it that they might get off of some other tools. So I'm hoping that kind of by observing the process here, we can tap into some reasons why that might be. So if uh, any questions on that, let me know. Thanks for that thumbs up, Randy. Yo, if you're rolling in, uh, do me a solid and hit the uh, thumbs up on the video for me. That just uh, sends a little dinger to the YouTube algorithm to tell them that I'm legit and they can share my videos with other people who might be interested. Moving on to 600 now. So I found that for a while I was skipping uh, stones in the lower grit. And uh, because they're coarser, I don't get the whole scratch. I don't get them all out. And then those coarser scratches stay in for the whole journey, right? So you still get them when you're done. So I'm back to using uh, most of the progression at the low grit, but I'm more comfortable with skipping some of the stones up at the higher grits. Okay, and special attention at the tip. Don't want to run it off. And I've done it. Yeah, like we've all done it. But you want to just be careful. It's not the end of the world if you do. But just slow down. Be a little more present with your mind when you're up there. Okay, so let me just check my... This is coming out. All right, it's not bad. Also not bad. I'm going to just cut the burr off. Not pushing down at all. All right, so that's kind of that would be like a toothy edge right there. That's 600. Finish that 600. That's that'd be pretty legit. Be sharper than most knives uh, people are carrying. But we're gonna keep going, going up to 1100. Now I'm into the diamond matrix, Randy. Uh, so if you're not familiar with the Edge Pro, this uh, shaft collar, the, the reason I'm using it is because it accommodates. Uh, for the difference in stone thickness and with a with a tool that is as precise as this one if your stones are not the exact same thickness then the angle changes a little bit and I did a exploratory video that I shared in the guild about why that's so important using my big block as in a to kind of illustrate how you could uh, end up getting all the all this work on the shoulder of the bevel and none on the apex of the edge, or vice versa. You're working the edge only, and then you kind of left with a weird non-flat bevel at the end.
I've also heard some questions uh, in the past, like, do you flatten your stones or you throw them out? And with the Edge Pro, actually, I don't know. You have to you have to find me one where you like the answer is not you flatten them, flatten them and clean them. It is another investment in a to rig to do that correctly, both with uh, Edge Pro stones and with bench stones. But it's worth it. And I particularly like clean flat stones. All right, I'm going to go right up to 4,000, skipping the 2,300. Eric Ryan's in the house. What's up, neighbor? Double starts coming alive now. As we get over that thousand grit, we really start getting a, a brighter finish, polished finish. My uh, the the force that I'm pushing the stone down with is pretty light now. Still got to do a little bit of work to get in here. This is a difficult ricasso. All right, do a little cut stroke, cut that burr off. All right, so that's it with the stones. Couldn't miss it. Ah, uh, yeah, you could, man. You got a, you got a busy life, man. All right, going on to the, uh, I have a 6,000 grit polishing tape here. I have found that this is the most decorative finish I can put on a knife. Meaning this, it makes it really mirror finish and it kind of catches your eye. Uh, the thing with the polishing tapes is no pressure. Uh, and I always do a pull stroke first because if there is any residual burr on there, it will cut the tape and then no pressure and just But man, it looks good. Are you seeing that? I think you are. I think even you're seeing that. Come over here, same, same. Pull stroke. All right, and for some reason that uh, is maybe not even true, but not explained, I, I don't know. I, I asked Ben this too, but for some reason I was finding that I wasn't getting as good of a cutting edge off of these 6,000 tapes. So I am doing one more. Uh, this is a kangaroo. This is a kangaroo strop, leather strop, with uh, uh, a half micron CBN emulsion. It's in a different drawer, but I just saw this note from Peter. The cheap version of the Edge Pro uh, is not worth it, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, a friend of mine reached out to me and said he got one and he threw it away uh, after doing three knives on it. In the scheme of things, the Edge Pro is not uh, wicked expensive, and it's I've been using this Edge Pro for five or six years, right? Like it's high quality. Oh, let me try this. Let's see, my focus is wandering. Okay, uh, leather, right? Only pull, only pull. Keep your wits about you. Focus on what you're doing. So I'm coming, I'm coming off the knife to, to do that next stroke. All right, and this, I can do one last one over here, one last one over here. All right, that's done. That Spyderco, I'm using the Apex 
the uh, this is gets confusing as well, Tim. Right. So the uh, Edge Pro makes an Apex and a Pro. So I can get a little confusing. I'm using the Apex. Uh, I've considered the Pro, but I haven't haven't needed haven't jumped into it. It feel it feels great. I'm just doing the, the the test here. Super smooth. It's nice and smooth. Like if you if you have any chips in it, you'll find them. Give a quick inspection here. Handled the tip well. Not rounded over. I can see a little spot where I did not get all the way up to the shoulder of the bevel, but for this, that's fine. The edge is uh, nice and shiny. Okay. Adrian, thanks, man. Thanks for being here. That wraps up the uh, Spyderco Paramilitary 2. I hope you find one across your bench someday soon. And uh, certainly consider it as an EDC. Nice knife. Real, it's nice. I'm kind of kind of interested. If there are any remaining questions before this show is over, make sure you put them in the chat. If you have not yet left a thumbs up for me, please do that. It's super close up of me. And um, How did I remove the thumb thing? How did I remove the thumb thing? Tim, can you uh, can you ask that in a different way? How did I remove the thumb thing? Oh, sweet, Randy, that's awesome. That's uh, serendipity is funny, isn't it? Something where the hole is. You're talking on the knife, right, Tim? I yeah. So there, yeah. So I think that's Eric's mentioning that there's no thumb stud on the Spider Co. Uh, and this, yeah, that uh, the thumb stud can be problematic, and I like to work around them when I can. A lot of sometimes I do have to remove them, and I um, I have. A set of tools that can help me do that. Sometimes they are even kind of hard to come out. Sometimes they are Loctited in. Uh, so yeah, the the Spider Co has no thumb stud, and actually that thumb that hole is uh, kind of a characteristic feature of the Spider Co. Okay, all right, right on. The thumb, the advantage, ah, sometimes a thumb stud is nice because it goes up net right up next to the, against the edge pro uh, table so that you set that uh, positioning always the same, but generally they more often than not get in the way. And then the other thing is the thumb stud a lot of times hangs out over the edge a little bit. And then uh, like if you're, you can't get a, you can't get a stone by, you end up running your stone up against the thumb stud. All right. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for uh, spending your Thursday night here with me. I hope you got something out of it and um, I'll see you. I'll see you next, uh, next week. I think I'm not fully committed to doing these all the time, but when it works out, I like to be here. And if you want to know about it, I uh, do try to send out a note to my email list and, um, and you can get on that by getting the 21 reasons to start a sharpening business in the description. And also I send a note out to the guild to get any uh, input on them. Thanks so much, everybody. Appreciate all the comments uh, this week. And uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.